In this video, I'm going to go over a sector in the market that I personally believe has a chance to make me significant profits this week and potentially in the weeks ahead. I got some interesting gem stock picks to go over in this video within this cannabis sector that I'm going to talk about. And guys, you can see on Friday last week before the market closed, I alerted my ticker ACB buy and my ticker CGC buy. Those just rocketed up 115% in after hours trading, 16% in after hours trading. Guys, I alerted this in the private discord on Friday before these really even started to move much at all. So if you guys want to continue to get the hottest stock picks in the market early, you need to join the private discord link in the top pin comment, or you could just simply subscribe to this page, hit the like button, and turn on the bell to get these picks early guys i'm killing it on these picks and i'm going to continue to show you guys what i'm doing not that you should follow anything that i'm doing because if you do follow anything that i'm doing without doing any research on your own you have the chance to lose money you got to do your own research i'm not a financial advisor i'm just sharing my own personal picks and the msos cannabis us etf is up 9% today in the 24-hour market. Yes, on Robinhood, there is a lot of stocks out there that you can actually trade 24 hours. And it looks like, well, it's pretty obvious here that the cannabis ETF is going to gap up tomorrow on Monday, which means our CGC that I showed you my, my buys on the Discord and the buys in the video, our CGC and our ACB, it's very likely to see those stocks gap up tomorrow, Monday morning, which would put me significantly in the profit, okay? So I do have a lot of other stuff to cover in this sector, which I want to, which is why I want to cover, you know, make this whole video here on Sunday, because I believe there, I, th I think it's, there's still a chance here to make even more money. I might, I'm, I think I'm thinking about even buying some MSOS tomorrow, even more ACB and even CGC. That's just what I'm thinking about doing, but let's go over the video. And I did want to mention really quick, people are asking me, Moon, why did you not buy TLRY? Why are you trading, you know, CGC and ACB? Uh, uh, you know, they're Canadian companies. And I understand that CGC and ACB are Canadian cannabis companies. And they're not even going to really benefit that much from this whole United States DEA reclassification if it gets passed. But I'm a trader, guys. And people remember when stocks have big runs. And last time this whole, you know, these rumors started swirling about the DEA potentially rescheduling marijuana to, you know, move closer towards legalization. We saw CGC run up literally 300, 390%. We saw ACB. This ran up tremendously as well. This ran up 150%. And it was a very quick, massive move. You know, this was up about 60% in a single day. CGC, massive move. People remember when that happens. And traders remember that. And when, when they see cannabis coming back in the headlines and the MSOS, the U.S. Cannabis ETF, start to get a lot of volume and a lot of action, traders are going to come back to these stocks once again because this is just what traders do. And as a trader here... I see more money. I see a significant amount of money to be made in something like CGC and ACB off of this cannabis hype that we're seeing coming into the market right now. So, you know, if we go to TLRY, we can see that it, it you know, it did go up during that last hype cycle back in 2023. It was around, you know, September, August, September, 2023. It had a 94% move, but it didn't have that big big shoot higher it, it, that single day you know rip that big single day massive move higher like we saw with acb and cgc so as a trader guys i know a lot of people are asking moon get in tlry get in tilray guys i see more money to be made as a trader somebody that's going to be taking profit on the way higher on acb and cgc now 
I want to buy ticker MSOS actually. I'm probably going to hop this hop in this one very soon. Ticker MSOS, the US cannabis ETF, and I potentially might ride this out as maybe even a longer term play here. Because if you look at MSOS, we can see here that this portfolio consists of all of the United States cannabis companies. And something interesting about the United States cannabis companies is they're all on the OTC markets. I don't think they can they're, they're I don't think they can even be listed on something like the NASDAQ and the NYSE right now. They're all on the OTC markets, which is harder to trade. You know, you can't just hop on Robinhood and Webull and start buying up these OTC stocks. Although these US cannabis companies are on the OTC are significantly better in terms of their balance sheet than something like CGC and ACB and a potential longer term catalyst for these US cannabis companies is, you know, of course, the DEA, the whole legalization thing. And these can actually eventually be uplisted onto the NASDAQ or NYSC once this approval starts to happen here for cannabis in the United States. So really look at ticker MSOS. This could be an absolute winner, you know, in the medium to long term here. If cannabis gets legalized in the U S and we have those, and we have all of these companies that are within the MSOS ETF get uplisted and then the legalization potentially happens and they start to make a whole bunch of money. So you can research all these plays within the cannabis ET MSOS cannabis ETF, like green thumb industries and all of these other plays. So keep an eye on that. MSOS, this, they're all U.S. plays, 100% U.S. plays. You can see 100%. So definitely keep an eye on that. And the short interest on MSOS is 20%. But like I said, as a trader, ACB and CGC, I still think these are going to be banger opportunities if this U.S. cannabis hype, you know, starts to take place and if it actually ends up happening. Now, let's go ahead and watch this video here, um, this CNBC clip here. And it will kind of give you more of an idea of what is going on. All right, let me play this so up. So within the cannabis community, this is the whole point, that the Biden administration has the ability to control every step of this process. This does not require legislative dynamics. Um, so what this means in terms of profitability, we've said this, the punitive taxation about being scheduled as a drug similar to heroin. Uh, and, and, you know, it, it, it's absurd. Those are her words, by the way. Um, it's interesting to note also that you know, at a time when we've seen, I'm not comparing the two industries, but think about the influx into crypto and into, into you know, what you've seen with Bitcoin. If you get the institutional world able to invest in cannabis, um, I think it's a game changer. There's a, there's a whole wall of capital. This is still a retail market. This would change a lot of it. Doesn't change the legality, but it would certainly allow, uh, I think, a lot more of these companies to have the type of influx that I think it would. And the companies that are trading on the TSX, uh, Cureleaf outperformed today, TerraSend, you know, those companies that are actually in places where institutions trade more actually did better today. So it's just something to think about with what we've seen going on with crypto assets. But this was, I think, I think we're relatively close here. We've had so many head fakes in cannabis. But again, if the administration wants this to happen, Biden appointed the DEA. I mean, they, you know, the, if he's urging this, I, I think it happens. So basically what's going on here is the VP and Biden are urging the DEA to reschedule marijuana as quickly as possible. Basically reschedule it from a schedule one drug that it's in right now. If you guys didn't know, cannabis is in the same category as heroin in terms of, you know, um, you know, it's, it's defined as a drug with no currently accept, accepted cool medical use and a high potential and high potential for abuse. So Marijuana is in the same exact category as heroin in the federal government. And even something like fentanyl uh, is actually a schedule two. So technically, you know, you're seeing something like fentanyl where a little tiny bit of that can kill somebody. I've seen examples. I've read examples of where like the smallest tiny bit of fentanyl has killed somebody and it's more acceptable for use in the United States than something like marijuana. Guys, I'm not going to get into my own opinion. It's just something to think about and, you know, something that could change going forward here. And, it, and you know, obviously right now, if marijuana is in the same category as something like heroin, then 
it's just not going to be legalized. So the only way to move forward and potentially legalize marijuana and cannabis, then you have to have this DEA reschedule take place. And Biden appointed the DEA and they're urging to do it as quickly as possible. So this is getting very interesting here. Also, you know, of course, we have that whole DEA potential rescheduling here for, for cannabis. But we also had some uh, interesting exchanges going on here and kind of a leaked conversation with a Senator Cory Booker, which is a senator that is involved in trying to get cannabis legalized. So basically, this guy here, this reporter said, have you heard anything about the DEA and the administration moving forward here, basically talking about cannabis, rescheduling, and legalization? Cory Booker, he said, I've heard a lot about it. He said, I've heard rumors that it might be April 15th. Have you heard that? He said, I don't want to comment on that. Booker, he laughs as he hops onto the elevator with his aide. He said, so I'm warm. Yes. Confusion as elevators are shutting off, shut, shutting and people shuffling past. Cory Booker, you didn't say 420. Right. Have a good one, huh? So basically the exchange appears to suggest an accidental acknowledgement that rescheduling of cannabis may be on the way. And obviously that cannot be confirmed, but this is some optimism going on in the sector here already. And also there are some people saying that Biden is going to announce a major cannabis related poly policy decision very soon. And people are suspecting it will be, of course, that rescheduling from the DEA, but it could be all, also be something more drastic, probably even more drastic towards full legalization of cannabis here. In some other news, you have Germany legalizing cannabis with some restrictions. And another stock you can keep an eye on on the OTC market is a it's a it's a solid U.S. cannabis company, a billion you know about a three billion dollar market cap is TC. And an F and something to note is Florida could see recreational uh, uh, cannabis being legalized in Florida for recreational use. And ticker TCNNF is actually dominating the cannabis market over there in Florida. So this is something to really keep an eye on, guys. You know, regardless of your political standpoint on cannabis. You know, it's, it's sort of a touchy subject to talk about it. I don't really love to talk about something like these drugs here. Uh, I don't love to talk about it, but when it comes to making money in the stock market on something like CGC and ACB, where I bought both of these stocks, I think it's important to talk about because there definitely could be a lot of money to be made off of these cannabis stocks, CGC, ACB, MSOS going forward here. If these, you know, this DEA rescheduling does take place and it makes marijuana a little bit more acceptable federally, it could actually have a big impact on the prices to the upside of a lot of these stocks. And the, of course, the risk is that if the DEA denies it and they don't reschedule marijuana and they say, no, it's going to stay up there with, you know, as a schedule one drug, then of course you could see these cannabis stocks come back down, but do expect a gap up for cannabis stocks tomorrow. And honestly, I do believe there's a lot of momentum and I do believe these can continue higher going forward here. That's it for me. Peace.